Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel, where everything you are about to hear and see has been done in one take. I'm your host, The One Take Man. This week I'm doing another uh, random video, this time given to us by idrlabs.com. Or, okay, the video itself isn't provided by them, but the uh, material for the video is, namely the hot slash crazy scale test. I'll, uh... I'll film myself doing it, but before that, let's uh, let's uh, look a little bit at this uh, preamble right here. Starting with this, this test is also available in the following languages, and yeah, among them, among them, U.S. I think this is supposed to represent English, but this page already is in English, so it's kind of wrong to call it also available in English when the default is English. Or is this or this is this supposed to be British English, and when you click it, you get U.S. English? Like, seriously? Is that what's going on here, IDR Labs? I'd like to know. <laughs> anyway, uh, the actual text part of the preamble. The hot slash crazy scale is a phenomenon popularized by the sitcom How I Met Your Mother, and is well known in internet uh, pop culture. Somewhat well known, let's say. Some claim that the theory is pseudoscientific, while others maintain that it's backed by proper studies. If I may uh, throw my own uh, two cents in this, uh, you know, in this particular uh, part of the preamble, it is to some extent uh, backed by studies, but that is if you consider the uh, uh, dating pool to uh, work based on market theory. I, I don't. I admit I, I'm not really well versed in uh, market theory because I didn't really study economics. I studied engineering. But there is one part of engineering that I and that does have some uh, tangential relation to that, namely when it came time to uh, discuss product development, one of the uh, one of the focuses of uh, uh, product development was how to assess a a product's uh, value for for a company based on a based on a two-dimensional chart. And I'm going to use uh, this little thing right here for reference. On one uh, side of the chart, you have the uh, innovation potential, and on the other side, you have the uh, economic uh, potential. And you assess the products of a company based on how they would, uh, on where they would fit on the uh, on a given chart. You can make similar assessments r related to both uh, current value and um, uh, and, poten and potential. Uh, changes to said value with uh, with many other fields so in that sense it is it, it is to some extent back but you really need to do some <laughs> you really need to do some lateral thinking in order to uh, apply it here the theory holds that it's possible to decipher how you should regard a potential partner based on their labels uh, labels levels of hot and crazy this version of the hot crazy scale test presents an updated and gender neutral approach to the theory. To take the hot crazy test, indicate your responses to each of the following statements below. And here we have the statements. Also there is this uh, part right here and there is also these, uh, this uh, little disclaimer here. The IDR Labs hot slash crazy scale test was developed by IDR Labs and is based on a cultural meme in internet society. The IDR Labs Hot Crazy Scale Test is not associated with any specific researchers in the field of psychopathology, social psychology, personality psychology, or any affiliated research institutions. And then there's also this feedback for all the uh, potential answers. I won't go. I won't go into them. I'll leave the. Um, I'll leave this test in the description below in, in case you're curious. And uh, and as usual, I think. When it comes to doing these kinds of quizzes and tests, all the uh, typical caveats apply. I am not, I am not exactly, I'm not exactly unbiased, nor did, nor does any result I uh, get here uh, uh, stay permanent. Anyway, we got 20 questions to go, so let's start, or rather, allow me to start. I engage in frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment by people who are close to me. <laughs> No, I do not have abandonment issues, but I won't. Uh, but I won't deny at least some of my behavior is motivated by that. Okay, next. Others seem to give me the benefit of the doubt more than they would for other people. Yeah, 
That's my problem being kind of a loner. I don't know how much benefit of the doubt other people get. Also, various groups get various levels of benefits of the of the doubt. So, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I get about as much as anyone else for whatever reason. The prospect of being abandoned or left alone triggers deep-seated negative feelings in me that I do not fully understand. Not really the case. I've I live by myself and have lived by myself for a pretty substantial part of my life now. I would like to see it change, but I do not um, really actively uh, seek it out either. I have, I, I have other things to worry about. Anyway, next. When in a relationship, I repeatedly ask my significant other if they still love me and still care about me. I should probably do that more, to be honest. I don't, I don't really do that. <laughs> yeah, hear the sorrow in my voice? <laughs> I'm starting to realize that things, some things. I get uneasy when I do not have pointers or social clues from others to guide me. A little bit. I'll admit to that. Oh wait, the other way around. <laughs> okay, moving on. I constantly seek out activities or social feedback in the hope that these will get me to uh, feel better. Activities, yeah. Social feedback, hmm. Not really. If I want to do, if I want to get better at something, I don't ask my friends. If I get better, if I've gotten better, I'll ask people who, people who are in the know. If my if my friends are people who are in the know, well, that well that's great. Hmm. And then again, what does it what does it mean to have uh, social pe feedback over technical feedback? Like it's good to have you here, that kind of thing. If so, that's not something I uh, constantly seek out. It's more of a nice to have. Okay, next question. I have repeatedly destroyed my possessions or thrown out valuable things that I own because I felt I was worthless and did not deserve them. I'm, I'm actually more of a hoarder, so that is definitely not true. Uh, people have often told me that they find it hard to understand my emotions and or decision making. Yes. <laughs> I have been compared to an alien at least once. Okay, next up. There is too much emphasis on athletics in high school these days. I don't know how much emphasis on athletics comes in uh, in, in high school. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, re I really don't know about this. I'm just gonna keep it like that. Next, we're about a, we're actually at a half point, halfway point. Look at that. Question ten. It seems like people often find reasons to talk to me or keep conversations with me going. Uh, I tend to be the guy who pulls other people's tongues. So, if anything, I am the one who is <laughs> who is more pressured in keeping conversations going. Uh, okay, next. Team sports are an excellent way to build character. I won't say excellent, but they are uh, helpful in that regard. Next up. At a moment's notice, I can go from thinking very highly of myself to feeling completely worthless. Not completely, but my self-esteem does, uh, does get affected by various uh, developments. Not sure, not, and maybe not at a moment's notice, but still, I I realize I my realizations about my self worth are a little bit more complicated than just you know this kind of mood swing. I have tried online dating or mobile app dating without getting many matches. Not actually true. Um, I, however, I have got I have only gotten some matches, not many. Uh, when I am confronted with the consequences of a bad decision I have made, I sometimes feel as if it was another person who made that decision. Well, in a sense, we are all different people. <laughs> From uh, one year to the next, maybe even one, maybe even one month or one week from the next. So this is not, so this is not technically uh, wrong. But if I, but if I notice. Um, the consequences of a bad decision I made, I don't think, oh, no, that was, oh, no, that was some other guy who just happened to inhabit what I called my body at the time. So this one is more, let's see, is it this or is it this? I'm gonna keep it at this. Next, I have problems with shopping sprees and or my spending habits. Not really, no. Next up, sometimes it takes only the mildest of triggers to elevate me to a state of bliss or throw me into a state of rage. Hmm. I I have been warned that I can get pretty combative, so 
yeah, I'm just gonna keep it here. I usually feel positive about the future. Now that well, climate change is a thing, so I can't so I can't really put this in the green. But at the same time, I can't really put this in the red, so it's gonna so it's gonna stay here. People often go out of their way to do special favors for me, and not the case. Or okay, maybe it is with uh, maybe it is with some, which is why I'm not moving this slider all the way there. I'm just moving it here. Okay, I have been propositioned for modeling jobs. Has never happened unless we're calling unless we're talking about prank calls or something like that. And here we are, last question. I often think that someone new in my life is perfect and then become intensely disappointed in them. Hmm. I do kind of idealize some people sometimes, but I don't think that is uh, I don't think that is entirely true. Okay, so give me my result. I am in the fun zone. Uh, somewhat hot, somewhat um, uh, somewhat hot, and just a little crazy. Okay. We got 60% hot, 48.33% crazy, which places you in the fun zone. Okay, let's see. People in the fun zone are cool, above average in attractiveness, and great to hang out with. Why, thank you. Everyone should spend some time in the fun zone to find out what they like and dislike in a partner and get and to get the awkwardness out of their system so that they will eventually be ready for a marriage or a serious relationship. Good to know. While fun is a good thing, the fun zone also has its risks. Since the zone is wedged right between the no-go and crazy zones, it is? It's not exactly wedged, is it? It's just kind of like to the side. <laughs> if anything, the crazy zone is wedged between no-go and fun. Uh, okay. Where was I? Oh yeah, here. Since the zone is wedged right between the no-go and crazy zones, it is possible to mistake crazies and no-goers as fun. Inexperienced daters should seek a second opinion if they are unsure whether their potential partner is really in the fun zone. Okay, and here are some references. I'm not gonna get into those. But yeah, those have been my um, uh, those have been my results. I'll consider whether or not I'm gonna share this. But for now, I'm gonna say thank you for your attention. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and maybe even share it wherever you think other people will uh, uh, like it as well. If you have anything you'd like to add to whatever it is I to any part of what I just said, the comment section awaits your input. And if you want to see when my next video gets released, well then uh, please subscribe. And ideally also ring the bell or do whatever else uh, YouTube will ask of you in order to keep you notified. I also have a uh, first channel, or a main channel, where I look into more uh, bookish or literature topics, which I will link, which is linked in the uh, description down below. Until next time, I have been the One Take Man.